Okay, so now we're going to talk about the adaptive immune system. And in order to start talking about that, we need to know what antibodies are. They're otherwise known as immunoglobulins. That's probably what your professors will refer to them as. And usually in the scientific world, though, you will say antibody. Um, or in the research world, I should say. And then usually in the teaching atmosphere, you might say immunoglobulin, just so you know what it is. But monomers, which are IgA, IgD, IgE, Ig. G and IgM, which are obviously Ig stands for immunoglobulin, and then whatever isoform they are. They're composed of two identical heavy chains right here. This is your heavy chain, so I labeled them uh, heavy chain. Um, this is an H, 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 H for heavy. Then you have two identical light chains, so light chain, light chain, and then we'll talk about this one over here in a second. Um, and these are all held together by disulfide bonds. So the globular domains of about 110 amino acids make up this. They're formed by intrachain disulfide bonds. The variable region of the heavy chain is characterized by variable amino acid sequence. So this section right here is a variable region and on the light chain, the same thing. The constant regions of the heavy chain and light chains have a relatively constant amino acid sequence. So this guy right here, all of this on both sides, these are all constant regions right here, this whole section, okay? Glycosylation affects antibody stability and then its interactions with other proteins. So I'm gonna talk about the different um, classes and types of heavy chains that each of these different molecules has. So there's different types of heavy chains. So IgG, has a gamma heavy chain. IgM has a mu heavy chain. IgA has an alpha heavy chain. Oops. IgE has an epsilon heavy chain and IgD as a delta chain. So that is a little bit important, just, to, just for your knowledge, if you're in a more advanced immunology class, you might need to know that. Um, the light chains are always kappa or um, lambda. So just kind of light chains are always kappa or lambda. So the light chains contain one variable region and one constant region. Um, the heavy chains of the uh, variable domain and three or four constant domains are de designated the C1 to C4 right here. Um, and the hypervariable regions within the variable region show even greater amino acid sequence variability, and they form the antigen binding site where the framework regions outside of the hypervariable regions, they exhibit much less amino acid variability. Okay, and then there's also proline rich amino acid sequences between the constant one and constant two domains that form a flexible hinge in this section right here. So this is a hinge and we'll notice here there's no hinge here which I'll talk about in a second. So this is your hinge which is formed by proline rich amino acid sequence. So this section, this light chain here is designated to gamma, mu, and al, or gamma, not mu, gamma, alpha, and delta, while epsilon and mu both have this one here. So there's an extra, extra additional domain here. So C2, C3, and C4, all the heavy chains. And then also there's no hinge on this one. I also want to add in that down here is called your FC region. So your FC region. Just this section is FC, which stands for fragment crystallizable. Whereas here, do this in a different color, is your FAB region, which is your fragment antigen binding region. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the proteolysis of uh, IgG and also immunoglobulin epitopes.